This mini PC is affordable guys, from 407 USD according to their website. It is the Geekom IT12 2025 edition. There are a few configurations available, we will check full price details later. The one that Geekom sent me for review comes with an i7-1280p, 32GB of RAM and 1TB of storage. This processor is a little bit older, it is from the 12th generation with 14 cores, 20 threads, we've got 24MB of cache and a max turbo frequency of up to 4.8GHz. Let's have a look what's inside the box. Here's the mini PC and it's nice to see this one is actually a mini PC. I've noticed that some of the other mini PCs in recent times are getting larger and larger. Here we have a comparison with one of the previous mini PCs from Geekom. So this one is a little bit taller but it's still got a very small footprint. In contrast here is one from another company and you can see that one is much bigger. In terms of weight, I measure just under 600 grams and the dimensions 11.5 centimeters wide, 11 centimeters deep and it's 5 centimeters tall. The power supply is nice and compact weighing only 255 grams and the cable is 1.5 meters long. Also in the box we have a VESA mount to attach it to the back of a monitor. There's a user guide, a thank you card and a HDMI cable. This one is rather short, just one meter. At the front of the unit we have two USB ports with 10 gigabits. I like how Geekom labels the ports clearly. We have a headset connector and a power button. At the left side we're getting a nice surprise. It has a full size SD card reader that is nice, especially for people like me who create content. On the right hand side we have a attachment for a Kensington lock. At the back there's a lot going on. We can drive up to four monitors, two with HDMI 2.0 up to 4K, two through USB 4 up to 8K and they also carry up to 40 gigabits of data transfer. The power supply goes at the back, also 2.5 gigabit Ethernet and we have another two USB ports. One has 10 gigabits, the other one is the older 2.0 standard. Let's open up the machine and have a look inside. On the website they're making a point of the build quality of this mini PC. Here for example all the tests that they are subjecting this computer. There are four screws at the bottom, easy to remove those and then be a little bit careful. There's a small ribbon cable attached and here we can see a two and a half inch SATA hard drive mount. So that's nice to see we can install a range of drives, not just modern NVMe drives. Installed is a one terabyte NVMe SSD. This one is from Crucial. With the RAM, here we can see the memory modules. It's not a brand I recognize. We have two 16 gigabyte modules. There are DDR4, so we're losing a little bit of performance because this processor can support DDR5. And there's another slot to upgrade a small SATA SSD. And now let's have a look at CPU performance, power consumption and thermals. Before I start benchmarking, I saw on the power meter that the mini PC was doing something in the background. So I uninstalled a few programs that I don't believe are necessary. And you can see it here in the Cinebench R15 results. It actually went up a little bit. So in the second run, I got a multi-core score of just under 2000 and the single core result of 247. In R20, we're getting 4,121 for the multi-core and 665 for the single core test. And here we have the results for R23, 10,745 for the multi-core and 1,728 points for the single core test. And here are the results for Cinebench 2024, 582 for the multi-core and 104 points for the single core test. I've been testing mini PCs for a while. Here is a comparison of all the mini PCs I've tested on the channel in Cinebench R23 multi-core. This one is right in the middle, it's good value. You can get mini PCs that are faster, but they cost a lot more. The high-end models cost a thousand USD or higher. The single core result is more competitive. This is a strong side of Intel. It's hanging in there with much more expensive mini PCs. 
using a power meter. When the machine is idle, it's sitting around six to seven watts. So that is really nice to see. Launching a multi-core load. At first, it goes just under 60 watts. So it's doing a little bit of a boost, but then drops down to around 40 watts. In single core tests, I saw a pretty consistent load of 36 watts. So all in all, this one is a lot more energy efficient than some of the high powered mini PCs. Let's have a look at temperatures. I've got some footage here from one of my latest gadgets of thermal camera, and we can see most of the heat comes out towards the back at the front and at the top sitting in 20s and 30s. But at the back, we see temperatures sitting in the 50s, nothing out of the ordinary. I had a look at CPU temperatures with HW monitor in the multi-core test. At first, it would go in the high 70s, some cores going up to 88 Celsius, but then it settled down into the 60s. That is similar to what I saw on the power meter, uh, burst initially and then settling down. In the single core test, I can see one core that is being worked really hard. It's going into the 90s with a maximum temperature of 99 degrees. I have a recording of the fan noise. You can definitely hear it. It's audible, but it's nothing that is excessively loud. And now let's look at the graphics performance. We have integrated graphics delivered by Intel. It can access up to 16 gigabytes of the shared memory and that happens dynamically. You don't need to adjust anything in the BIOS. In CloudGate, we're getting 23,044. In Skydiver, 16,309. Night Raid, 16,829. Firestrike, 4,864. And in Time Spy, we're getting 1,787. I've put the Firestrike result in my graph with all the other mini PCs tested on the channel. And we can see it's again, middle of the pack, good value, not as fast as some of the higher ones, but again, they cost 1000 USD and more. Let's check out some games. Dirt 3 is the first one I test, 1080p ultra details. We're getting around 60 FPS. So for this one, you're better off playing with high details and then you're seeing over 100 FPS. I also played Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 1080p with the lowest settings, around 30 FPS. So this mini PC is gonna struggle with the latest AAA games, but if you're happy to play at 720p and at low details, then it is acceptable. It is much better suited to play your older games, that huge backlog catalog that you have on Steam, GOG and other platforms. The machine came with Windows 11 Pro to do all the benchmarking. I always connect to the internet, download all the latest updates and very important, you need to go to the Intel website and download the driver utility to get the latest and greatest video card drivers. For those of you interested in Linux, yes, good news, it is supported. With these mini PCs, there are always promotions, Black Friday, Prime Day and so on. So pay attention to all the coupons on the website. Here's one, for example, a flash sale, which drops the price by 5%. Let's have a look at all the options. For 429 USD, you can get the one with an i5 12450, 16 gigs of RAM and 512. There is the next one up with an i7 1280p. 16 gig 512, you're looking at 549. And the one that I reviewed, which has the 1280p, 32 gigs of RAM and one terabyte, you're looking at 599. So guys, all in all, I think this is a nicely put together mini PC with a more value oriented price tag compared to some of the high-end models that we checked out in recent reviews. Performance is good, especially single threaded performance. The Intel graphics is also not too bad. A lot of games will run perfectly fine, especially if you're into the older ones like I am. I like the flexible upgrade options for storage. We're getting a SATA SSD that you might have lying around in a drawer, but also an old school two and a half inch SATA drive. A nice selection of ports. I like personally that the USB 4 ports are at the back because 
That's how I can hook up my capture card as well as my monitor or in the back. But again, this is a situation where these mini PC companies can't win. Everyone has a different preference. So you just have to look what your machine has to offer. So guys, there you go. That was my review of the Geekom IT12 2025 edition. Let me know down below what you think of this one. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.